Hey, so today I am at McLaren Kuala Lumpur and besides me here is the Artura. You would remember recently that Bobby, Tana and Thomas had taken this car on a nationwide track covering 2,000 kilometers in just 24 hours, thereby proving the undoubted reliability and durability of this car under hard usage. Today, I am experiencing it for the first time personally for a shorter time frame covering lesser distance, but we'll be diving deeper into the technical aspects of this car and what makes it so magnificent. This video is brought to you by Ewo Club Car Wash. Our motto is service and solutions. You can bring your car to us for deep cleaning, shining, full-on restoration, or just a regular wash. Whatever it is you need help sorting out on your car, we are more than happy to assist. To get in touch with us, drop us a line on Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp us on the number on your screen now. So in McLaren's current lineup, the Artura replaces the 570S as the brand's mid-range offering in the Sports Series family. Above, we have the 720S from the Range Topping Super Series and below we have the GT, which is, well, from the entry-level GT family. Where it gets a little confusing here is that the Artura now sits on a completely all-new platform and it also boasts the most advanced but not the most powerful powertrain concept in the entire McLaren range. And the thing is, when you look at this car, you would have thought that it is based on the 720S but it actually isn't. So now the Artura is the very first model to be underpinned by McLaren's all new carbon lightweight architecture, MCLA for short. It is for now the only McLaren vehicle to be underpinned by this platform, but you can of course count on McLaren to eventually maximize the usage of this platform in future introductions. Also new and for now unique to the Artura is a 3-litre V6 engine that working in combination, in cooperation with an axial electric motor produces outputs of 680 horsepower, 720 newton meters of torque. The Artura, therefore, with its all-new platform and engine, bears absolutely no mechanical relation whatsoever to other existing McLaren models despite, well, looking pretty much the same as the rest of them. Now, most V6 engines in the market typically have either 60 or 90 degree bank angles. 60 often being regarded as the most optimum angle for the best balanced harmonics. 90 degree V6s are usually the products of V8 engines having two cylinders removed. Here in the Artura, we have the world's first production V6 engine with a 120 degree bang angle. The only other 120 degree V6 engine is currently from Ferrari powering the 296 GTB. Now, the reason why McLaren used a 120 degree bang angle, despite that means the engine being more bulky, having occupying more width, is that they are able to use that space in between the cylinder banks to fit the pair of turbochargers between the banks. So you see, this satin chrome feature here is not a decorative piece, but rather a chimney that allows the heat from the two turbochargers to escape. So now, despite being built from a clean slate, the Artura continues to maintain a strong family resemblance with other members of the McLaren range. I mean, one look at this, the resemblance to the McLaren models that we are familiar with is outright unmistakable and taking a closer look at the details now the tail lights have a slightly thinner slit construction but this whole large honeycomb grill design this is very trademark mclaren and we have of course the waist level exhaust that gives the artura that distinctive mclaren family look and the rear diffuser down here very aggressively shaped and coming up here we have a closer look at the engine cover now this engine cover is not meant to be opened by the user 
but they have these Allen key screws here, there and there so that it can nevertheless be accessed by the service team for maintenance. Now we come to the side. Now the wheels are of a relatively simple 10 spoke design but inside there you have those massive brakes that showcase its awesome stopping power. So now one of the design features that I particularly like about the Artura are these two flying buttresses. They actually have no load bearing function but what it does is that it sort of like gives the whole silhouette the roof that kind of like a canopy look where of like a fabric being stretched to cover the cabin see if you look at the overall cabin mclaren's use of carbon fiber allows them to create the glass house with very slender members you can see this is the actual load bearing member you see how slender it is be hidden behind the glass here's the b pillar and the a pillar here and here you can see this is where airflow goes into the radiator to cool the engine so now coming to the front if you are familiar with recent mclarens the arturas nose really holds no surprises there are distinctive touches but the family resemblance with the likes of the 720s with the gt even the 570s that precedes it is utterly unmistakable and checking out the details you can see there's a fin design here and the headlights occupy this small space and if you look at it from the front now the front bumper design is aggressive yet not overly complicated but if you look clearly you can see the amount of cooling coils inside here there is a lot of things being cooled behind this front bumper right so let's check inside the cabin all right so inside here the arturas cabin offers a very familiar mclaren fare there's a generous spread of very beautiful high quality materials throughout design wise it's quite business-like very technical feel to the cabin as i the first time when i sat inside here it doesn't feel even like i'm flying a plane almost like a spaceship rather so here the steering wheel is a very simple sporty three spoke setup you have pedal shifters here and it's a nice metallic pedal shifters now the plus and minus pedals are both interconnected so you can of course use the usual pull method or if let's say like you want you're holding on one side you want to trigger a downshift while you're holding this side what you can do is you can push this and it simulates as if as this side is being pulled similarly if you are holding the left side and you want to trigger an upshift what you can do is you can push against the minus pedal now up here are the drive mode controls so on one side this side where this side is the stability control system where you can choose between track sport comfort you can press ESC to dynamic or off and once you go into dynamic mode what you can do here is that you can adjust how much slip does the system allow you to have before the electronics intervene and catch you up here this is to control the transmission response you can press this to engage manual mode or you can press here to either scroll electric comfort sport or even track so what i like about is that these two controls are placed in such a way that you can just move your hands up this way and you can adjust accordingly without having to take your hands off the view now coming back to explore this screen here okay you press this to come out to the menu and you can have access to other things such as driving positions audio media we're going to driver assistance and check out what are the systems available you have high beam assist you have undertake prevention basically it stops you from overtaking on the left and what you have here you have road sign recognition speed warning 
lane departure warning okay so it is in terms of ADAS systems it is as you would expect for a car in this segment relatively basic okay now here you look down there is another the cup holder here two slots here nicely sized just good enough for you to drop your phones inside three buttons to uh, to control the transmission reverse neutral drive engine start stop button another cup holder here and also this opens up to a lid with your usb and usb-c ports and a 12 volt socket over there now the door bowers and wilkins sound system here but what i want to show you is this to open the door you have this handle here pull and what you do is that it's shaped in such a way that you use your elbow and push it up very very clever very very intuitively designed now something you may not expect to find in the Artura here a full 360 degree camera and just to give you a closer look now the resolution isn't great but the stitching image stitching is very good so the overall result is an image that is uh, not of the highest resolution in the business but easy enough to comprehend and another nice touch is that up here as, as you reverse on the instrument cluster we have the reverse camera shown of course don't forget to also check your mirrors as you back up okay so we are now rolling off from this place in janda bike in full electric mode now the artura when you start the car the engine does not power the car until it warms up so when you get going until the engine has time to sufficiently warm up you will always be moving on pure electric power so while getting the car warm up you'll just drive in pure comfort mode the way this car responds to you see even in such low speed driving conditions right the car is just so communicative you know the i can feel everything the suspension and the wheels are doing and the way it responds to my throttle and brake inputs is so predictable it's so linear and despite knowing the amount of performance on tap it is just so easy to drive so you see i'm coming up to that bend just gently dab on the brakes turn in all right there is that very strong feeling of unity with the car. It's like the, the response from thought to movement of the car is almost instantaneous. It's as if as the car is an extension of my body. And its reactions are so pretty that even when I negotiate these relatively sharp turns I barely have to make any corrections because my first attempt to point the nose into the corner I just get it right as you if you will observe my steering inputs it's all very smooth there's barely any need for me to twitch or to make mid corner adjustments and the ride is in the context of a supercar just utterly sensational now you won't be getting an s-class ride but you see that's not the kind of ride you want in a supercar either in a car like this what you want is you want the suspension to filter out just about enough imperfections so as not to jolt you but you still want to feel the surface the details of the surface coming up to you so that you know what's going on underneath this car is just so intuitive so intuitive see i'm just leaving it to the car to decide whether it wants to fire up the 
engine or remain in pure electric mode. But I can tell you from my earlier experience driving it, whether the engine fires up or whether you're driving it in pure electric, the car's behavior remains entirely the same. The only difference is that when the engine starts, you get a bit more noise. Maybe the car knows I'm recording a video, so the engine is keeping quiet so that I can, so that you can hear me clearer through my audio. But look at this, the, I'm just, I'm so amazed at the intuitiveness of the controls. I'm stringing together all the bends in one smooth and swift steering action to car up high wing. I'm going to just flick the transmission to sport and the engine comes to life. Hear that? this is where the fun begins <laughs> okay unlike Bobby Tana and Thomas during their cross-country drive I, I don't have to worry about in case the tank goes empty or whatnot because I have time to go and re stop and refuel this car anytime <laughs> because I'm not chasing the clock except maybe wanting to get back to Glen Mary in time to avoid the traffic jam. So you see I'm going over these rumble strips. You feel the rumble strips underneath but the suspension filters enough of it that it doesn't become unpleasant. And there is enough compliance right that it ensures that even when those rumble strips disrupt your traction the car remains utterly benign and under control see all these mid corner ex expansion joints hardly interrupt the composure of the chassis oh, oh my god it's honestly, it's been a while since I've driven a car this fast. Or rather, it's been a while since I've had the confidence to drive a car this oh. <laughs> And here's the thing. The, as the engine cuts in and out of operation, it does not have that typical plug-in hybrid feeling when the engine fires up all right and and puts power down it jolts you there is no sudden burst of acceleration the car at all times and i mean at all times maintain an utterly linear and predictable response it's almost like driving a car not with a turbocharged plug-in hybrid but a large naturally aspirated engine and it gives you so much confidence to put the power down around the bends this is a chassis that you know you get the feeling it works together with you now one thing you will have to be very careful when driving this car is that it is not fast it is deceptively fast so you will be clocking very illegal speeds easily without realizing it because all you have guiding you right if you don't look at the speedometer is the occasional noise from the engine and the engine does not always come into play it requires just so little effort to get up to speed
when you are cruising along and you suddenly step on the accelerator there's none of that feeling of that slight lag and boom suddenly it punches you no you step on the accelerator you get instant immediate acceleration and just because it does not punch you in the face doesn't mean it's not fast okay it just doesn't feel that fast but my god this is just such such an effective if it's an effective tool to cover a lot of miles at a rapid pace with very little effort you know i can imagine a scenario in which this car would be great at it's that suddenly you wake up one day and let's say you stay in KL your friend from Penang ajak you hey bro wanna have lunch today or not you just hop into this and you blast your way up north you'd be there in time not for lunch but for brunch and the best part is you would have completed that journey having expended barely any energy you would still arrive fresh ready to go and once you are done with your chao kway you are ready to just jump on the road and hit back to KL for tea time it really has been a while since i've driven a car at this kind of speeds and it still gives me that assuring confidence and that is testament to the engineering prowess of the McLaren chassis engineers because remember this McLaren once upon a time the years when i was growing up for a long time they held the title of having made the world's fastest car the McLaren F1 which is a car that a lot of us who grew up through the 90s still dream of that is the expertise right and also all those years competing at the highest level of motorsports F1 that is the kind of expertise that has gone into making this car now you see that brings me to the comparison of McLaren with other supercar brands you see when it comes to and this is something that i can draw experience from our every month our monday night lives and we do dude where's my car every month every time when chiang flashes a mclaren against a lamborghini a mclaren against a ferrari or any of these comparisons the instant feeling is that we all know the mclaren will drive better but it is still the ferrari and the lambos that tug the hearts that stir that stir the emotions and the reason why that is so and you can feel it when you drive this car is that mclaren as a company puts all its efforts all its resources well the most of it into their engineering and which is why when i drive the artura here and also the 720s some months back there is that distinct impression that the engineers put in very painstaking effort to fine tune every little aspect of the driving experience you see the way the steering the brakes the throttle the way they react to your inputs is as if as all three contact points are living and breathing as one right in recent times there are too many times that i drive cars that the steering behaves one way the brake pedals behave one way the throttle pedal behaves one way but here in the artura despite the fact that this car has two disparate powertrains electric and petrol the steering brakes and accelerator all behave right in one harmonious unit which explains why earlier when i was coming down from janda bayek i was able to string through all the corners at a brisk pace hardly needing to make any steering corrections because the this car connects to me at an almost intuitive level it goes beyond my conscious mind it's like i i see that gap there all i need is just 
one tiny tweak of the steering wheel, pop, and I am there exploiting that gap with barely any drama. This is a car that really makes you look like a precision instrument. It makes you look like you have the driving talents and precision of a highly skilled surgeon. So now earlier when I said that when you compare McLaren against its Italian competition, the Italians just somehow give you the impression that they are more flair, they are more drama. But here's the thing, as I drive the Artura now, and this being a plug-in hybrid, I cannot say that the driving experience of this car is not engaging at all. In fact, this is one of the most engaging cars I have driven in recent memory. The way it, it connects with your intuition, it's almost supernatural. And you listen to the sound that the engine makes, the way the car reacts to your every inputs. You can't say this car is not engaging because it is. It is just such a sensational car to drive. But what is the problem? What really is, I would, you would say, the drawback of the Atura? Here's the problem. You see, at this level, at, you know, supercar level, people don't just buy your Ferraris, your McLarens, your Lamborghinis purely out of ability purely because of how fast the car is, how engaging the car is, how well the brake pedal, the, the steering responds. No. Let me put it this way. When you are at the level of a supercar buyer, what you want is you want a car that you can buy. Okay, you buy already, you drive the car, right? Then later on, when you go to the pub or when you go to the mama, you sit down and talk with your friends, you want the easiest possible story to tell your friends to boast how good, how much you enjoy the car is. And in all honesty, telling people, telling your friends how linear the steering is, how linear the brake pedal is, how much the, the car connects with your nerves, doesn't quite have the same effect as saying, my car got 1,000 horsepower, everybody shut up. So, at this level, Here's the little wisdom that I've learned. Facts tell, but it is stories that sell. If you look at it deeper, as an engineering graduate, I appreciate the, I love the kind of engineering attention detail that McLaren puts into its cars. I will not have these cars built any other way. But the missing piece now in the McLaren picture really is, what is the story that now accompanies these cars? What is the story? What can McLaren tell, you know, in terms of their heritage, going back to their past, you know, their triumphs in F1 of how for more than a decade, McLaren had the fastest car in the world, right? All these stories need to connect to the present generation of cars, right? It's just like how Ferrari continues every day to milk their F1 triumphs. They are legendary greats like their 250 GTOs or 275 GTBs, all that. You see those, the stories of those old former greats continue to be told and retold and that goes into our collective psyche. That is the missing piece that in a way McLaren has that is stopping us every Monday dude where's my car right to pick McLaren more often when when Chiang flashes it up against a Lamborghini or a Ferrari because simply put the Artura here is a fantastic car right it is a marvelously engineered vehicle but what it now needs is a story to sell it. Okay, so here we have it. This is the McLaren Artura and what a fantastic car it is to drive. Now, I personally harbor a lot 
of reservations against hybrids and plug-in hybrids because they introduce unnecessary complexity to the whole drivetrain setup. But here in the Artura, in the supercar segment, if you think about it, the Artura, the SF90 Stradale, plug-in hybrids make sense because you are already paying top dollar. A bit of complexity goes with it because you see in a supercar, the electric motor plays two critical roles. It fills in the gaps in the torque curve of the combustion engine to deliver a smooth, linear and instantaneous response almost like a large capacity naturally aspirated engine. And secondly, the electric motor comes into play in slow moving traffic conditions, in traffic jams, in parking lots, when you are reversing out of your home why do you want to burn petrol doing such menial tasks? Save every drop to attack that corner on the way up to Chin Sui along Karak Highway or blasting on Plus Highway all the way to Penang or to JB. Now, what I really like about the Artura is that despite having a plug-in hybrid setup where you have to interface between engine and electric motor, McLaren is able to tune it to such a degree that the car changes its power source with barely any glitch. It is seamless. And what is particularly impressive is that in occasions when you hear the engine start up on the move, you would expect some sort of jerk to happen, but it doesn't. It just delivers a smooth, unflinching, unrelenting acceleration. So in isolation, the Artura is a fantastic piece of engineering. But where it has a bit of problems is how it is positioned in the family. Because you see, at 1.05 million ringgit, you come into a McLaren showroom, you see the 720S going for 1.3 million ringgit, just 250,000 ringgit more. You get more power, you get a more visceral driving experience. To a lot of buyers, that jump becomes an easy decision to make. So in my opinion, the Artura is a great product, but I believe McLaren should have taken this concept, the plug-in hybrid concept, and applied it, create a model right at the top of the hierarchy above the 720S to as an ultimate technological showcase to demonstrate what McLaren is truly capable of. It does not take away from the fact that the Artura in isolation is a magnificent automobile and it is a fantastic piece of engineering. Now, if you have not done so, I highly recommend that you watch the three-part video that features Bobby, Tana and Thomas taking the Artura on a 2,000 kilometer journey across Peninsular Malaysia in just 24 hours. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, share with me your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have not done so, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well, so that you don't miss a single video that I upload in the future, whether it is a car review or car care tips. And of course, do catch us live every Monday night, Bobby, Tana, Thomas and myself on Facebook and on YouTube to take your car buying questions. And if you need car care, car detailing services, do contact the Evo Club car wash team to find out our latest promos and packages or if you just need advice on car care matters. So until my next video, take care, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Let's do a drive around Peninsular Malaysia. Where, where, where? In uh, no, like Penang, Johor, Kuantan. Oh. Serious, uh? KL. Yeah. And in, we get? in 24 hours. What? 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. oh. We need a fast car. How fast? This is the McLaren Artura, the latest hybrid supercar from Woking. And Bobby, Tana, myself are going to drive this car 2,000 kilometers around Malaysia. Bobby will drive the first leg from KL to Penang, Tana will drive from Penang to JB, and myself from JB to Kuantan and back to McLaren Kuala Lumpur. But here's the challenge. We have to complete the whole trip within 24 hours, making it an endurance journey. Now because Bobby flagged off at 2pm, I have to return by 2pm as well on the following day, or the whole trip will be considered a failure. 136 
Driving the last part of the journey, a lot of expectations rest on me and my co-pilot. Did we make it back on time? Stay tuned to find out more in this crazy 24 hours challenge. Oh man, what's the Dukat Irida? 203 on my, on my, on the waist. Bro! Oh, what the hell? Oh, that's cooler! Let's go, Skola! Go home, go home! Oh shit, this. <laughs> hey, look, what are you doing? 159, 159. Come on, Honda City. Come on. 